August iteration of the Universal Pokemon Federation. Uh, this is going to be Quadruple a... E. There you are. Hi, Mark. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. Um, could we do whatever the hell this is later? No, we can't. Because I saw the bowl that you pulled. Mm, could you elaborate? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Don't act like you had nothing to do with it. I saw what you in the social media department pulled. You took my video, my segment, my call out from last month, July, and posted it on Instagram, okay, on TikTok, but you, you posted it on Instagram, not as a reel, you posted it as a video. And you didn't even post it on Twitter. Okay, uh, Mark, look, I, I don't know what you're going on about here, I... You don't understand. You really don't. The algorithm favors reels. And if I'm not on that algorithm, that means I'm not being seen. And if I'm not being seen, what's the point of me battling and talking every single month? I am the majority contributor to the UPF. And if I'm not being seen, what's the point? That means most of the UPF is not being seen. So here's what we're gonna do. You are gonna delete every single segment in this episode that has nothing to do with me. August is gonna be the month of Mark Cameron, baby. All right. Uh, well, here's your episode, folks. Uh, our main event is going to be Mark Cameron versus Femrir. Winner takes on Don Pokemon for his UPF World Championship. Uh, before that, though, we're gonna have Mark Cameron with some words for his opponent. And before we reach all of that, First, we are going to have Jerome Moonraker versus Maestro Rio with who but Mark Cameron on commentary. Without further ado, I guess, here's the episode. Alright, here's the first battle to kick off the episode. Jerome Moonraker versus Maestro Rio. I'm your commentator, Mark Cameron. And, uh, uh, what's there to say about these two guys? Jerome Moonraker? Beat him before. Maestro Rio? Uh, he, uh, I will beat him eventually, but, you know, here's some doubles action in Pokemon Showdown. Let's just, uh, jump right into it, I guess. So, Jerome decides to start with Zapdos and Ninetales. Two Pokemon I don't think I've seen him pull out. Maestro Rio with Pre-Marina and Colossal. Pre-Marina is that, uh, his signature. Oh, he just used his an Aqua Jet on his own Colossal. Oh, Maestro Rio with the, with the cheating going on. Hitting his own Pokemon. Uh, Zapdos being smart not hitting his own Pokemon with that discharge. Uh, that Garchomp is almost taken out. Colossal Max Guarding, wasting a turn with that uh, Dynamax. <laughs> Terrible decision for Maestro Rio. Uh, Primarina, his signature taken out. I think Jerome wins right there. He took out Maestro Rio's Maestro's signature. That's already a win in my book. You do that, you take out a, a trainer's signature, you win. Alright, so Venusaur is now in for Maestro Rio and Drapion for Jerome. Uh, Jerome J Dynamax to counter uh, Maestro's Dynamax. Ooh, that Max Flare taking out Zapdos. And uh, Earth Power blocked by a Max Guard. Ninetales back in for Jerome. He's on his last two. Rookie mistakes by Jerome. Reasons I beat him before. That and I'm also just better than him. Heat wave coming in, eliminating Ninetales and half of Drapion. Oh, but Jerome knocks out the Colossal. That's another. That's two wins for Jerome right there. That's two wins. Now you notice Jerome does, didn't even bring his signature. He didn't bring his Electivire. 
So, Maestro automatically gets a leg up in, in that uh, department because he brought his drone, his ex or his signature, his expertise. Uh, but Jerome just hanging on with 2% right now while he's up against Lyford and Venusaur. And that's gonna do it. Jerome, you gotta get better, buddy. You're not gonna get better with uh, battles like that. Maestro, uh, Maestro wins. Yeah. Alright, look forward to my, my stuff in this episode now that we're past this. Uh, here's here's some words that I've got to say. Uh, Maestro Rio four and one. Jerome Mega three and six. Who cares? Who cares about these losers? I have something to say right now. So stay tuned. Oh, Femrir. <laughs> I am so glad it's you and me now. I'm so glad you beat Maestro Rio. Congratulations, by the way. You and I now battle. And the winner will face Don Pokemon for the UPF World Championship. <laughs> and boy, am I excited. Because, whew, last time, I picked the battle. Now normally in a saga like this, when it's the third battle in a, in a, in a series, Quadruple E would be the one to pick. Make it a little even. But, I did a little finagling. <laughs> with the higher ups, you know, perks of being, uh, <laughs> perks of being friends and partners with Don Pokemon. So, our battle is gonna be nothing you or the rest of the UPF have ever seen before. No, our battle will be a no switch battle. No switching out, or you'll be dis qualified <laughs> yes you'll be disqualified if you switch out at all unless your Pokemon faint <laughs> so good luck Femrir <laughs> good luck because you're gonna need it now while I have you here UPF world <laughs> kick rocks I saw what his little video said he said he was sending out a little package to everyone and I have here a little package a little, a little small little package no label on it it's unmarked let's see what this little newbie <laughs> has to say the hell? Welcome everyone to yet another exciting match here at the UPF. Here we have a very very contentious match here between Mark Cameron and Femir both who will be fighting to who will be going against Don Pokemon taking the championship title, a rematch between Mark Cameron and Femrir. Two very, very hot rivals here. Let's see who's going to win here, who's going to lose, and I bet it's going to be a very, very fun battle to watch. Here it's going to start. Femrir sends out Rose Raid. And... Aries, Togek is sent out by Mark Cameron. Starting out with the traps here, Spike sent out by Rose Raid. More of a defensive play here, Aries sets up the light screen, reducing sp special damage dealt. Rose Raid going for the super effective sludge bomb onto Togekiss. Does less than half thanks to the light screen, but does get poisoned. That's gonna take a toll onto the tanky Togekiss. Thunder Wave onto Rose Raid, paralyzing it and making it slower. Status being applied on both sides of the team. Leftovers is going to be re revealed onto Ares. That poison damage is gonna stack up. You have to be careful here. Air Slash from Ares comes out, does connect. Super effective damage onto Rose Raid. Does it flinch? It does flinch. Going for that para hacks and flinch hacks. Combo, very dangerous and very annoying to go against, I guess. Uh, Femrir's taking 
a, men uh, a taste of its own medicine from the last battle against uh, Maestro Rio. Air Slash coming in. Super effective damage into Roserade is going to knock it out as it's now faster than Roserade thanks to Paralysis. Roserade is down for the count. Now it's a 5v6. But if I'm not mistaken, no one is allowed to switch out here. You are stuck there as if everyone had the Shadow Tag ability. If one does switch out, you are considered disqualified from the match. And Ares is down for the count. Garchomp does manage to outspeed Ares and picks it out. Now it's an even 5v5 here. Though Light Screen does wear off and Life Orb is um, revealed from the Garchomp. He wrote him for the going for the trick. Maybe Choice Scarf, he was able to outspeed the Garchomp, so it has to be Choice Scarf here, right? Yes, a Choice Scarf is tricked onto the Garchomp. Garchomp going for a Swords Dance. Yikes, that was an amazing time. A trick by Mark Heron's part. Garchomp is stuck on that Swords Dance and cannot switch out. So Garchomp is basically just considered over. I can't do anything unless it's... Unless Rotom does not manage to knock out the Garchomp and I guess struggles to death. But... That's free! It's the freest Garchomp on for, for Mark Cameron here. Yeah, Mar Garchomp goes down to another life or boosted Hydro Pump here. Uh, does really, really suck, but I guess Mark Cameron really well played and got lucky that he used the Swords Dance here. But it's okay. Both sides have enough Pokemon, so. Okay, Famir is going for a Spirit Tomb. Very tanky beast of a Pokemon here. Spirit Tomb going for the Sucker Punch, but it is going to fail because Rotom decides to instead use a Thunder Wave. Effectively, just having a free turn of Paralysis onto the Spirit Tomb. Mark Hammond already opening up with his um, Dynamax turn here. The first turn of Dynamax, Dynamaxing the Wash Rotom here for maximum damage to try to break through that Spirit Tomb. The tanky beast, as I mentioned before. Big washing machine towers over the opposition here. Going for another Sucker Punch here. Does a sizable amount of damage for the Dynamax. Going for a Max Lightning here. Does under half. Spiritomb does manage to tank that out. However, um, the next Max Actually, no, never mind. Max Lightning will not deal increased damage. Because remember, guys, Rotom is levitating. So Electric Terrain has no effect on Rotom. Spiritomb was going to go for the Sucker Punch, but... Does get fully paralyzed. Here comes a big lightning bolt, and Spiritomb does manage to survive that. As I predicted, that life or damage chip is going to really stack onto the Rotom, even if it's Dynamax. Okay, so important to note here that was three, a full Dynamax just uh, reserved for one Pokemon. So that does mean <laughs> Premier is a uh, three. Pokemon down, but still has an entire Dynamax available. Lucario is now sent out. Let's see, will Lucario be able to knock it out before? Okay, Femir here does go for the Dynamax, Dynamaxing Lucario, making it tanky and extra damage. I don't know, what is he planning? I don't know. Maybe increasing its attack while tailing the Rotom here with Max Snuffle? Who knows? Guys, remember, you can't go for Bone Rush or Max Quake here as, is, as Rotom is levitating. Thunder Wave, so okay, Rotom does manage to outspeed the Lucario here and paralyzing it, crippling its speed. But Max Quake, remember, Rotom is levitating as I just mentioned before. Lucario has basically wasted one Dynamax turn here. And Hydro Pump doing insane amount of damage. And Max Knuckle does find the KO and Lucario's attack stat is raised by one. Lucario is also donning the Life Orb here as Electric Terrain dissipates. No more sleep uh, sleep cancellation and no more electric type boosts. Charm the Charizard is sent out by Mark Cameron here. Fire type against the Steel type. Fire Blast does miss and Steel Spike from the Lucario here. It is resisted, but that's gonna be a lot of damage coming out from here, a resisted hit. But remember that plus one and life orb is gonna help in the damage department. Both Pokemon are susceptible to each other. Harm goes for Fire Blast and it does connect in, yes, it is going to knock out the Lucario. Here, Femir is now two to four and Charm is gonna live at one HP after the life orb damage. Go good ca health calculations onto the Charizard. Here, going for an Air Slash, maybe praying for a, 
for flinch here. Yes. Okay, Charm does go out, and Milotic does flinch here, basically negating anything he was trying to do, even if it were set up. Kirby is sent out. Kirby the Magnezone. Electric Seal is really good against this Milotic. And a Thunderbolt going out. Yeah, Milotic is on low health, but it seems here that unless something miraculous happens, Milotic just might be knocked out here. Kirby is going to take another skull, and yeah, that's Milotic down for another Thunderbolt. Femir is now down to one Pokemon only. Let's see who he has in store. Kirby is going to still keep healing from that leftovers, but it might be in range of a KO if the Pokemon is strong enough. Togekiss from Premier's side, here out. Togekiss goes for an Air Slash, praying for a flinch here maybe? Yes! It flinches all throughout. We've had three Air Slash flinches here in this match already, as I imagine it's very annoying for both sides now. But Togekiss, that might mean that this Togekiss is just like Aries being a flinch kiss. Like, what happened against uh, earlier in the match. It's kind of a war of attrition. Is Herbie, is, is Togekiss able to flinch Herbie enough to knock it out or is Herbie just gonna knock out Togekiss in return? Winning mark the match. Let's see, Air Slash comes in, flinches again, but Leftovers is just gonna heal Herbie back up. So it seems like Air Slash is only doing about six damage after the Leftovers. So let's see if this war of attrition actually works. Togekiss going, going for a roost making its flying type weaknesses um, disabled for the turn. So Thunderbolt won't do full damage from Super Effective. It does take it under half again. But Herbie's just going to keep healing. If if Togekiss heals, Herbie heals. And that means that that, that residual damage that you're doing onto it is, means nothing. What is this game? The game of the, attri uh, of the attrition? Of flinches! Oh my god, guys. I guess this is the, the last dash in here. Premier doing all he can to stay in the fight. It's 1v3 right at the moment. Let's see, as we saw last time, though every time Pogs gets roost, that means another uh, air slash needs to be added on. And Herbie just keeps healing, keeps healing up. Air slash coming in. Flinch or no flinch? Kirby does power through, does not get flinched, and Togekiss is down for the count. Congratulations, Mark Cameron. You are the victor of this match. Femir, good game, but ultimately, someone has to win. Good game all around. Congratulations, Mark, for winning, and congratulations, Femir, for putting up a great battle. Uh. Christ, you're still here. Um, well, there you have it. We have our main event set for September, which, by the way, is going to be our big two-year anniversary special. We're going to see Mark Cameron and Don Pokemon go head-to-head -head in a battle for the UPF World Championship. Speaking of tiers, check us out on upfworld.com. Celebrate with us. Check out, you know, all the action that you may have missed. Get some merch. Get some accessories. There's tons of for you. Thank you so much. We will see you next month.